Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to United View. Hope everybody is doing well. I'm joined by Kenny today um, for our annual our annual remembrance, man, of the 1958 Munich air disaster to remember our beloved Busby Babes. It's something that is so, so poignant in our history. It's something that is so, so important. And you know what? We spend so much time as Manchester United fans of this era, of this day and age, talking about transfers and the next game coming up and the title race and top four and goals galore and all of the stuff that consumes us as everyday football fans, which is okay. But sometimes, you know, we kind of forget the history of our football club, you know, poignant moments in our football club and the things that very make that make the very fabric and DNA of our beloved Manchester United. And I'm, I'm so happy that Kenny's joined us today to share uh, his views and his thoughts and feelings on the Busby Babes. And for our younger uh, for our younger supporters or people who haven't been supporting Manchester United very long. Um, and indeed, just people who actually, you know, there are some fans who have supported Manchester United for a very long time, but sometimes haven't connected with the Busby Babes or really kind of taken that time to to dive into what actually happened on that tragic day on February the 6th, 1958 um, in Munich. There's some people who haven't quite done that. So if this can enlighten you and, and remind you guys of our history and where we're coming from and, and why so many things that transpire into Manchester United of now, are so important, then um, then we'll be happy um, to, to to help you guys with that. Um, Kenny, thanks for joining us. I mean, Not the problem. Busby Babes, the, the Busby Babes. I mean, lifelong Manchester United fan as you are. When when you think of the Busby Babes and 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 you remember obviously that tragedy and just what the Busby Babes were, what sort of thoughts come to mind? My thoughts are about you. You can bring it right through to the present day because without the Busby Babes, you wouldn't have had Manchester United as of today. And the abiding thing that, in my mind, is there is one thing that takes you, and I will take you from, you know, the, the babes through, is that Bobby Charlton was a babe. Bobby Charlton is here today. The standards that man set as a footballer, uh, the culture that was created around the babes, etc., etc. He's been the one guiding light that has, has transferred from Busby through to Sir Alex and uh, and uh, today. So I go back to when I was a boy. When I was a boy, I was born in 1962. And my father was a, a lifelong United fan. So I had to be a United fan. And, anyway, and that's how it was. So I, I idolised George Best. I absolutely idolised George Best. So my one of my first matches that I saw was the 1968 Cup Final, uh, European wow. Cup Final. Wow, and 10 all years my dad after, could yeah. set all my dad could say to me was he wasn't as good as Duncan Edwards. So I would say, Dad, George Best is 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 incredible. He says, Listen, he was not as good as Duncan Edwards. And so then you start to you listen as 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 a fan to what the older generation, which was the generation before me, was telling me about the Busby Babes. And you can take it back to Sir Matt Busby. Himself, so Matt Busby was a great footballer. So Matt Busby played for Manchester City. People don't know yeah. that, but so Matt Busby played for Manchester City. Then you had the war years, and then after the war, and Pete, things were different then. And it, it wasn't my generation; it was this was my dad telling me. But Manchester, Man, Old Trafford, four years after the first, the Second World War, you couldn't play on it because it had been bombed. So they played at Main Road. So Man United played the games at Main Road after the war. And people, you just that just would not happen this day and age. So Sir Matt Busby was given the job and Sir Matt Busby had a dream. And Sir Matt Busby's dream was to win the European Cup. It wasn't about Premier Leagues, Champions Leagues, whatever. It was to, to win the European Cup. And he went about it with a style of play. And he knew that the style of play he wanted, he needed younger players. He'd adopted a, an older team at Old Trafford, but he knew deep down in his heart that he had to have younger players. So he, he recruited the Babes as we know them today. And those Babes, when they won, won the first league title, I think it was 56, 57, the average age was 22. Now, 22 years of age. Unbelievable. The average age for a, in, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And in a footballer, he had Duncan Edwards. So all we can look back on is we can look back on reels of all reels. And there's very, very little about then. I think Match of the Day was started in 1955. And Match of the Day then was one game 
and you had to wait to the Sunday papers to know anything about your own football team. It wasn't like today. There was no. It wasn't social media. It wasn't this. It wasn't Instagram. That's what it was. So I always look back. You and I, Felix, love Man United, and we are true football supporters. We love our football. So I listened, or I still listen now, to the great people of that time that were football pundits or whatever. And what do they have to say? And I look at I look at our rivals and I look at Liverpool. So when I look at Liverpool, I look at I look at Samat and I look I, I put him on a parallel with Bill Shankly because he built that dynasty at Liverpool. That Dennis that dynasty was then passed down from Samat to Sir Alex. It, there was a big gap in between, but that's how it, how it got passed through. And then over at Liverpool, you had Shankly that passed it on to Bob Paisley. Bob Paisley's got on record as sitting there. Bob Paisley, remember. It's, a, it's an older than me. So he's seen the Pushkases, the Di Stefanos of Hungary. He's seen the Pele's, the best. He had Daglish. He's had the lot. When, Sumat, uh, when Bob Paisley says the greatest football team he's ever seen is the Busby Babes, then that, in its, that just tells you how good they were. The pundits of the day say, if... The Munich early disaster hadn't have happened. Bobby Moore would never have played in the World Cup because uh, our beloved Duncan Edwards would have been England captain. He would have been in there, yeah. He would have been. He would have had this position. Yeah. So how good was Duncan Edwards? If we revere, yeah. if we revere, we all revere Bobby Moore as a great footballer. We revere all them great teams. But when you've got the likes of all the top pundits. The likes of Bob Pays are saying that the greatest team is the Busby Babes and the greatest footballer was Duncan Edwards. Wow. What, yeah, what, absolutely. What, and uh, how good were they? How absolutely. They? And a a great. You, you have to look back as well. Football rivalries. There's always been football rivalries, but the, the world was a different place. So two weeks after the disaster, United had, had to carry on playing. And we played Sheffield Wednesday, Wednesday in the FA Cup. And we played the youth team because sadly, we'd lost our players, we'd lost our trainers, we'd lost everything. But the, the game went on, the game went on, and we put our youth, our youth, so it's the equivalent of going to Wembley, this the Carabao Cup, with our under 18s on against Newcastle. Yeah. That and, is the and that's level. what puts it into perspective. Yeah, that was that's exactly. what puts it into perspective for for exactly. many young fans uh, here. And and actually, just to bring it back to Sir Matt, um, you know, you talk about he wanted to win the European Cup because you know I, I remember reading as well, and you know I've always been reading about the Busby Babes, and he was the he was the first person to 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 get an English team in to that competition. Like you said, I, Correct. I mean, he, and that, he was yeah, the first person right. to say, if we want to be considered as the best in the world, exactly. as the best in Europe, we've exactly. got to play against them. No, and, it's, and that relates back to his own footballing career because he was aware, and that the generation previous to me, all they ever spoke about was Hungarian football, was De Stefan and Pushkas. That's all yeah. they ever spoke about. And we England played them twice and they absolutely humiliated them. And England were then rated as fantastic. England thought they were the best. And in Hungary humiliated them. And then, I think it was Wolverhampton Wanderers played the then Europe, the Hungarian champions that were the army team. Right? So Wolves beat them. And the press at the time raved that Wolverhampton Wanderers were the best team in the world and the best team in Europe. And they, they were good because they had Billy Wright and those players. So that kind of set the ball rolling of who is the best in Europe. So you were for them, as we know them, set up what was the European Cup. So the European Cup hasn't gone on forever. The European Cup was the late 50s. Exactly. Chelsea should have been the first representatives. And they said Chelsea no, should yeah, have exactly. Been the yeah, but Chelsea's affiliation, uh, the people on their board had an affiliation to the Football League at the time and refused to enter it as champions. Exactly. The exactly. year after, United entered it. And the, that's, the rest is history. The, the rest, rest is history. history. And, and what, yeah, what people do... For, tend to forget as well in that tragedy it wasn't just our football team because when United used to travel away like all the other teams did they took the press with them 
So yeah. all the press that was related around, so the Manchester Evening News, the Daily Mail, the Daily Mirror, the Northern, there was lots of, you know, journalists lost their lives as well. So it was yeah. just more than our football team. It was, and, you know, our, the country was in mourning. And that's yeah. how the Busby Babes are revered, not just by the United fans, but people across the world, because it touched on such a raw note that people that were so young tragically lost their lives one night over over a game of football. And, I, you know, the, the, we went up to Matt Busby, you know, Manchester United carry on playing. While Sir Matt Busby was still fighting for his life, he was still in the Munich hospital, and I think he had his uh, his last rites read to him twice. They expected him to die, and his football team was carrying on going. Wow! He then came back and asked himself, "Do I carry on or or, or not? Do I carry on after the tragedy?" And it's, I believe he set himself a target of five years. Because he knew it would take five years to build anything like a team again. And he could have built any team, but he wanted a mm. team that was young, attacking, flirt, etc. That was Busby. That was the Busby Babes. So then we had what we know as our greatest United team, my generation, was Beth, the only Trinity. Beth, the Trinity, Moore, yeah. Shelton, Sadler, Stepney, Crew, and it goes on. And, you know, we won that night at Wembley. Uh, you know, against UCBO's Benfica, we beat them in extra time. And for me, oh, I, was a, I was an eight-year-old United fan. It was like, wow. But even though that we, I, I didn't really understand then. I understand now. Yeah, and but I what had gone before that? Life. Yeah. What had gone before? What had gone before? And I yeah. think, if memory serves me correct, Sir Matt knew then he couldn't go on and build another team. It mm. built three teams at United. It built the Busby Babes that tragically lost their lives. It had to then resurrect a team from Loney's, what we would call Loney's, borrow, yeah. beg, steal. And then yeah. he, he set himself a target to redevelop his own football team. And, and he did it. In the, in, and he did it. He absolutely yeah. did it. And it, it was incredible it. to say that not only did he build one, he built two. And the dynasty you have today... When, and it tickles me, it really does tickle me, when people talk about new stadiums and they want padded seats and heated seats. And I'm thinking, when I'm 70 years of age, I want to stand on the Shretford end. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to, I want to go for a pie at, uh, and a pint or whatever. I don't want prawn sandwiches and lobster thermidor. That's not what my <laughs> United fans are about. Yeah, our, history, yeah. our history is about from the 70s all the way through. And when Sir Matt left, there was a massive void. Wilf McGuinness, who'd been a Busby Bay himself, he, you know, he was injured, so he, didn't, he wasn't on the plane, he didn't travel to Belgrade. So Wilf McGuinness became manager. And it's the only way I can re relate it back is if you look at Sir Alex Ferguson when he left and we give the job to David Moyes, Right. What a yeah. task we give to David Moyes. Yeah, it just, it was just almost Morris. impossible. Yeah, exactly. Impossible. Yeah. Wilf McGuinness in the early 70s had exactly the same task. So we then went a very, very similar transition from Sir Matt all the way through to Sir Alex. We went through, I think there was uh, Wilf McGuinness, Farrell, Sexton, Tommy Doherty, Sexton. et cetera, et cetera. Now, don't get me yeah. wrong. I love that. Atkinson, teams. all the I way up, them. yeah. Atkinson, right? Yeah. And then we got to um, Sir Alex. So we'd seen a void as, as, as fans. I think we'd only, we only won two FA Cups in 15 years. Yeah, but before we that, when we, when we won it in the 92, that was, that was, we had a long, long gap and people forget that oh, Manchester United, gap. we reigned supreme uh, in the early 90s all the way through to you when can, sort of City and Chelsea got their money. But before that, it was Liverpool. Flex, you think about it now. You were when I watch all the fan channels, as you know, and I'm listening to all these younger, younger people, and I'm thinking, I've seen this before. Yeah. I have seen this before. When a dynasty is, is handed over to, to people that can't basically lace the shoes of the previous manager, you know, yeah. and I, I really do. I hope, I really do hope that Ten Hag is now that next man to, to create a dynasty because if yeah. it's not. If he has got as much support as I have ever seen any Manchester United manager, honestly, 
we, we, you was on the ground against City, you know, at Old Trafford. That, it was electric. It it's was absolutely, that was that yeah. big, that was going, to me, it was going back to the 70s. That was electric on that ground. Wow. Ten Egg walked out and there was pure adulation for him. Yeah. If that man isn't given the support of the fans, the board, the new owners, etc., it may be 30, 40 years. It won't be in my lifetime. You'll be sat where I am. You know what I mean? As a 60 odd year old man saying, Oh, I remember Sir Alex. And this. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And we, it is true. And I, I, I still drop, I do draw parallels. Uh, to, you know, I draw parallels to Liverpool all the time because yeah. I see Shankly as Sir Matt. And I see yeah. Bob Paisley. I see Bob Paisley as Sir Alex because yeah. they both built dynasties that were built previously. After to the greats. The, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. And they, they handed Absolutely. it over. I you, wanted to. Um, I, I wanted to. Wrong. I wanted to talk about uh, somebody as well um, that we haven't mentioned actually quite yet, and that was just going kind of back a little bit before we bring it to the present day and wrap up. Was Jimmy Murphy? Because yeah. Jimmy Murphy had. You talk about actually in the long term of the cycle of the dynasty handing it over from a great to to somebody else, but actually yes. within the short term of 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 after the after the babes' crash, and obviously Jimmy Murphy. Uh, took over. Uh, he was yes. he was Samat Samat's you know right hand man number two. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. He was, and he's he was the now coach. getting yeah, his yeah, ex yeah. exactly. He was the coach and he took over um, while Samat was recovering. And 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 it has been revealed um, earlier. Sorry, last year actually, I think that Jimmy Murphy's going to get his statue now actually as well to to commemorate uh, his, incredible what he's done. and it's huge. So, so, Just talk us a little bit about what Jimmy Murphy did because he was instrumental in Jimmy rebuilding Mur Manchester what, United. What, yeah, what Jimmy Murphy did because. You've got to remember, we were we were we had to play carry on playing football, so we was in the FA Cup two weeks after. Jimmy Murphy yeah. had to get a team together. It, you know, is the, the 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 young players that he loved, he probably looked at them as sons or whatever. that either just died or were dying in hospital beds, and and, and his boss, uh, Sir Matt. So what happened then was we had a situation where. You know, to be fair, the football world supported United. At they the did. Time. They gave From us the players, didn't they? That, From everywhere. We, yeah. We, we were, yeah, we played an FA Cup final with players that were that were lent to us mm. from other clubs. Incredible. That just wouldn't happen today. It no. wouldn't happen. But that was the that was the shock. That was the awe of the impact of of, of what had happened. So Jimmy Murphy, for for the next twelve months. Up right up to I, I'm not sure if I don't when we made the final uh, against Full uh, was it Bolton uh, and that no Fulham it was and, and then Nat Lofter scored, but uh, uh, if memory serves me correct. So Matt Busby walked out on that final in crutches. And, and yeah, I've seen the footage of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. With yeah. crutches. So Jimmy Murphy, he was the man that you know. Without Jimmy Murphy, you would have. You, I don't know what would have happened. No, what, no, there the, would have been someone. Ex, exactly. exactly. There would have been someone. Jimmy have, Murphy and, you, and he carried on from from Samat. Yeah. He had the strength of character. Strength of character to do that. And there's lots and lots of stories when you look back about how football was so different then. We played. I think it was in '57. We played Real Madrid in a, a, a European Cup final, and we had to play them at Main Road because we had no floodlights. Mm. Yes. Unbelievable, now, there's be young people watching today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Old Trafford had no and then in fans. 10 years later, in 68, like you said, the game you went to, you know, to, to a decade later, being able oh, to, to lift that cup. And that was, that was the rebirth. That was the rebirth. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and we had a, you know, as, as United fans, all we had, all we could do, you had some great football teams then. You really did. You had Brian Clough at Nottingham Forest. You had Don Revy at Leeds. You had Joe Mercer built a dynasty at Manchester City. He, he was the he was the Sir Matt or whatever. So there were some great teams that you know they're not fashionable teams anymore. Nottingham yeah. Forest is not a match. For me. But it just shows you how cyclical Brian football Clough. is, isn't it? You know exactly, and that's that's yeah. the point I'm trying to make about where we are today with Ten Hag. Yeah, for me, yeah. what I see in Ten Hag, I know he's dealt with matters around Ronaldo, about these players that we had a real issue with last year about fighting for the badge and the pride and this. That is all of a sudden we're seeing that again. So it's absolutely. In, it, it's absolutely you know, and when you you saw at, um, you saw at Old Trafford on Saturday. 
when they unveiled the We'll Never Die flag. And they yeah, came they do every and, year. You know, yeah. They do that. And Tenag was there. Tenag understands that. He I, does. I he gets it. He, he gets it. No, he gets, he gets it. it. He gets it. He, he gets it. He is it because he what knows. he is is he's a footballing man, isn't he? And because he's a footballing man, and his level of intellect of football and understanding of football going back, I don't know if you've seen that clip of when he was with Johan Cruyff as a, and he was like a ten-year-old. Yeah. And he basically yeah. has like yes. a, a quite quirky <laughs> remark, and you're like, wow, you're trying that to tell him to play hard. football. No, I yeah. Don't, yeah, and that just shows you, you know, the school that he's coming from, you know, and the he school he's coming from. And I'll, I'll yeah. go back to the fact that you know our beloved Bobby Charlton or whatever Bobby Charlton yeah. started was an original Busby babe. He's still there today. Yeah, and Sir Alex picked up that mantle from Sir Bobby and Sir Matt and got to understand and you know, um, you know. We never saw another team like the Busby Babes till the 1992 team. We never did. Yeah. We never did. No, we had some no, great players. We had, you know, I used to love watching Gordon Hill, Stevie Coppel, Pierce, and it goes on, it goes on. And we'd yeah. win the odd trophy or whatever. But when we had the team of 92, that to us as close as we will ever get to the Busby Babes. Absolutely. Absolutely, Kenny. Listen, um, thank you so much for joining us today and, and help spread knowledge and, 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 you know, tell your own kind of touching stories um, for the Busby Babes and, and what it means to you. Just like a really quick closing statement, just to younger fans and maybe new fans of Manchester United, or like I said at the top of the video, maybe Manchester United fans who are lifelong but have actually never taken the time to, you know, um, dive into in, into this side of the football club and and how historic these this this horrible tragedy was and how ingrained it is in the DNA of our football club. Um, what would be your message uh, to those fans? My message to those fans would um, we historically Manchester United Football Club uh, uh, and its fan base was predominantly the northwest. So when I used to go, it used to be young lads, except working class. I go to Old Trafford now, and it's multicultural. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. There's people travelling in from China, you know, and people scorn that, but they shouldn't because we live in a small world. All I would say to those people is, if you come over to Old Trafford, take the time to go round uh, and do the tour of the, of the museum because you learn so much. If you don't have access to to ever come to Old Trafford or whatever, then please take the time to look at the, the history, you know, YouTube or, or whatever, and you will see and you'll come to understand why Manchester United is a very, very special club. And it's a special club because of Sir Matt Busby and the Busby Babes. Absolutely. Great words there from Kenny. Really, really appreciate it, guys. Um, please, in the comments, you know, converse with other Manchester United fans, connect with other other Manchester United fans. Let us, let us know what, you, what you've learned. And I just echo what Kenny said. Ev you know, everything is at your fingertips, guys. We're living in a world where to find out a piece of information, you can literally Google it or go onto YouTube and other things. Amazon Prime, there's loads of um, documentaries and different films that have been made about the Busby Babes. It's all out there. So we would urge you to, if you never have done, it's really easy to well, get caught up in the modern day, isn't it? One so, last thing. Yeah. I just like yeah. to mention a friend of mine. Uh, there are over 10,000 Manchester United fans that have travelled over to Munich today. And I've got a friend that was in Manchester Airport with 10 of his lads, you know, from Garton in Manchester. Uh, I've been, I've been in, seeing my friend here in Manzarotti, Brian, today. And he did the tour last year. He went over to, to Munich or whatever. And I know not everybody can do that or whatever. But when people take the time to travel to another country to remember uh, a piece of history, that tells you how special that football club is and what it means to individuals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as you can see, many other football clubs have joined Manchester United in remembering the Babes. Liverpool, Arsenal, I've seen Manchester exactly. City. So. Um, the same how, you know, when Hillsborough happened, etc. Exactly. Um, no, you know, they're, they're very poignant the moments fire, in football. Where, Heisel, exactly. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Exactly. Terrible, terrible. The time where the whole football community around the world comes together um, and the Busby Babes are definitely ingrained in all of football's history, not just Manchester United. Exactly. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you all very, very soon. And a big thanks to you, Kenny. Thank you so much. Not a big problem. Man. Lovely. Thank you, man. Lovely. Thank you.